coming into the new year, like most other people, I was setting some goals. Specifically, goals for my YouTube channel. And I decided that this year, subscriber numbers was not one of the goals that I was going to track. So, which goals have I decided to track this year for my YouTube channel? And if you have a YouTube channel, should you rethink your own goals? I have decided to film this sitting on the floor in the boat and Pixel has decided that this is the perfect time to start playing with one of her toys. <laughs> so if you hear some snuffling and a few bumps, she's having the time of her life while some of us are trying to work. I have made two YouTube specific goals this year and I can't take the credit for coming up with them. <laughs> Back in December last year, when we were thinking about this whole goal setting thing, I got an email from a mailing list called How to YouTube. It's written by a guy named Tintin Smith, and he is the YouTube producer for Ali Abdal's hugely popular productivity YouTube channel. In this particular email, he was talking about the plans and goals that they had set for Ali's channel in the coming year. And there were two metrics that they realized were the most important to focus on and subscriber count wasn't one of them. I know it's easy for a massive channel with over 5 million subscribers to say that subscriber count doesn't matter to them, or is not a goal for them, but I do agree with what they are thinking, and I think if you watch this video, you'll understand as well. There's also a third metric that I think is super important, especially if you're a coach or an expert trying to get onto YouTube to share your knowledge and to find more clients. So stick around for that one. When thinking about goals for a YouTube channel, it is definitely very easy to jump straight to how many subscribers you'd like to have by the end of the year. It's an easy number to see. You can see it on everybody else's channel and then start comparing yourself to everyone else. Not necessarily a good idea. Having a subscriber goal is not a bad idea. It can be fun to watch your progress and your growth through that number and it definitely can be motivating if the subscriber count is going up, but it shouldn't be the goal that you focus on. If you think about it, it's one of the few parts about being on YouTube that you can actually control. Sure, you can put a call to action into every single video, hit that subscribe button, but Let's be honest, people are only going to subscribe if they like your content and they want to see more videos like this from you. So what can you control on YouTube? The simplest answer is the number of videos you post in a year. Choose a number and stick to it. Whether that's a video a week, a video every two weeks, a video a month, or an arbitrary number of videos, like 42. The answer to everything in the universe. 42. But there is a caveat here. Quality is better than quantity. Make sure you pick a number that you can realistically stick to and still continuously improve the quality of every video as you go along. There's no point in doing two videos a week if you can't dedicate the time to making every single one of those a great video. The core of this comes down to your audience. As a coach or an expert, you want to create videos that are genuinely valuable to your viewers. Simply banging out videos because you have to create content is not going to attract the right people to your channel. Make sure the videos you're creating are genuinely useful for the people that you want to serve. My video goal is to upload 24 videos in 2024, partly because that's really catchy and fun to say, and partly because that is approximately two videos per week, and I feel like I can comfortably produce two high quality videos every two weeks, especially considering I'm doing all of this myself, the filming, the editing, etc. So our first goal is set, video uploads, we can control that, all good on that end. What is the second metric that we should be considering when measuring and tracking our progress on YouTube? This one is our video views. We didn't really pay a lot of attention to video views when we were creating videos for Narrowboat Chef, and it was only if a video got a lot of views, it did really well, that we would kind of notice anything different. Sometimes it was easy to predict if a video was going to get a lot of views. For example, when we had the engine out of our boat, we knew people would be curious about how that happened, what was involved, and it was also extreme, as in engines don't come out of boats 
that often. So it creates that sort of curiosity factor. But moving forward with the channel, especially with the change in direction, I know that tracking my video views will give me a good idea of if my videos are a good match for what my audience wants to see. I know that for a little while my views are going to be somewhat skewed because a lot of the people watching are old Narrowboat Chef followers who are kind enough to stick around and see what we're doing. But as I continue to create new content for the new direction of the channel, I will slowly start to attract new people who find the new videos valuable. I said new a lot in that sentence. <laughs> What you might not realize is a lot of thought has to go into getting video views, so don't make the mistake of thinking this is an easy goal to achieve. Most importantly, you have to get people to actually click on your video. In the book The YouTube Formula, Daryl Eves says the click is the most important part, because if somebody doesn't click on your video, you're not going to see any growth no matter how good your videos are because people aren't watching them. Two key components will influence whether somebody clicks on your video, the title and the thumbnail. Now, I'm not gonna go in depth into what makes a good title or thumbnail in this video. That's a topic for another very long video. <laughs> but don't make the mistake that a lot of new creators or YouTubers make, ourselves included, for literally the entire chapter of our Narrowboat Chef part of the channel. And that is filming or scripting the video first and then creating a title and thumbnail for it. Instead, start with the title. Brainstorm as many ideas as you can. Think about what will create curiosity, what will compel people to click. But don't clickbait people. Make sure the title actually has something to do with what is in your video. Now, this is a strategy that I've only just started using for our channel. As I said, know about Chef, filmed it do the thumbnail title after. Don't do that. So I'm not a pro at this yet, but I've learned that having a great title can help you film your video and make you consider including things or excluding things that you might not have thought of before. For example, in the co-working video that I did a few weeks ago, having the title first helped me come up with the, what I would hope is a more engaging start to the video which was me in my pyjamas. There is so much more than this very basic level of start with a title than what I'm going to put into this video. But if you're interested, I highly recommend the book The YouTube Formula by Daryl Eves. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Once you have a good title, it's time to think about the design of your thumbnail. This is the visual part of the video that somebody is going to see first and they're going to see it next to lots of other videos that are all trying to get that person's attention. Again, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what makes a good thumbnail. Suffice to say, a lot of studies have been done on the topic. Just keep in mind that simple is often better and your thumbnail should reflect your audience's tastes. For example, human faces are known to attract a lot more attention, but if you're a foodie vlogger, then perhaps a mouth-watering image of the food might be a better fit for your audience. Don't look at Narrowboat Chef, for examples. We didn't always do a great job with our thumbnails. Suffice to say, we've learned a lot since we started. With all that in mind and using some historical data from our YouTube channel analytics, I've decided that my video views goal for 2024 is going to be 120,000 views. That is on new videos only, not counting any backlog of Narrowboat Chef videos, only the videos that I publish in 2024. That averages out to about 5,000 views per video, as long as I stick to my 24 videos in 2024 goal. Obviously, some videos will get more views, some videos will get less views. I'm tentatively confident with this goal, but with us changing direction of the channel from the cooking and cruising content to more educational content, I think it's still going to be a good goal to focus my efforts on. And if 120,000 views sounds like a lot, to put it into perspective, back in 2020, Narrowboat Chef got over 700,000 views in a year. Those were good times. Okay, so I've made my number of videos uploaded goal and my video views for the year goal. There is one more 
metric that I want to make sure I focus on this year. Now it's not a specific goal as such, but creating the right videos that your audience finds valuable is the most important metric to keep track of. It's a bit painful to acknowledge, but I do expect our subscriber numbers on this channel to go in the wrong direction for a while, because a lot of people who are watching these videos at the moment are still people who used to watch our Narrow Boat Chef videos. And the videos that you guys found valuable were our cooking and cruising adventures. Now that we're changing direction, it's understandable that people are going to unsubscribe, and that's okay. Even though it might hurt my ego to see the subscriber numbers drop. I just hope Narrow Boat Chef will remain a fond memory for the people who joined us on that chapter of our journey. So if you have a YouTube channel or you'd like to start one this year and you've set yourself some goals, I would love to hear them in the comments below. Or if you started the year with a subscriber goal, I'd like to know if this video has made you think a bit differently about that goal, whether it's still useful for you or not, or if you've thought maybe you'll go back and tweak your goals. As I said earlier, having a subscriber goal isn't a bad thing, but there are other metrics that you can control and take action on. So whatever goals you've set for this year, I hope you achieve them. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, I'm not as young as I used to be. Sitting on the floor is a lot harder than I remember. And now I've got to get up. Ugh. Oh. Oh.